All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We got to talk about the bond market. Now, Powell came out super hawkish today. Powell was on super hawk mode. And we're going to take a look at treasury yields and the TLT. Uh, we need to talk about what's happening. All right. We're going to go through some interesting uh, tweets, uh, you know, from FinTwit and things like that, going over um, just some really good data sets that I want to share with you guys. All right. Uh, via all-star charts, U.S. Treasury bonds are making new five-month lows. Uh, Liz Young is also talking about how Treasury bears have the upper hand at the moment. It seems like everyone is getting bearish on bonds right now. And I'm a little bit more of a contrarian trader. Um, you know, I do just mostly focus on technical analysis. And lots of the technicals were giving us short opportunities. Um, you know, you can see over 300% on some TLT shorts. Uh, and then talking about setting a trailing stop loss on the last 10 after saying that I was closing all of them but 10. All right. Uh, so, you know, we've been capitalizing off this move. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you know, we've been talking about some of the key levels uh, and we've given those key levels in the discord as well. Uh, but now we need to talk about what potentially can happen from from here. Right. I mean, if you missed and you were unprepared for the massive move and massive sell off to the downside, now, the real question is, you know, what's going to happen next, right? Are we about to put in a bottom? Are we just going to dead cat bounce? Uh, we'll go over my thoughts and opinions on that. Um, but you can see, you know, when you look at treasury yields, right? And this is the 10-year treasury yield, right? The TNX. We had the cup and handle set up, right? We saw the cup and handle. We had a clean breakout retest of the, uh, you know, the top of the cup and handle. And we've just absolutely exploded since then. Okay, we're going to go over what it is that we've been looking at, what indicators I'm looking at to help give an edge, such as the RSI. You know, we pointed the RSI out on both charts of these. Uh, we filled the gap down to 88 today uh, and then bounced a little bit, closing up here at 88.30. And then I want to talk about some other things that I'm paying attention to as well. There's something called the EQRR. Uh, we're going to go over what that is, how it you know really helped to give me an edge uh, when it comes to you know, potentially sniffing out some of the hawkish CPI reports that we've had and the hawkish change in tone of some of the Fed members here recently. Uh, and then I want to zoom out a little bit and just go over what the phrase higher for longer, um, you know, can mean, all right? Because I think a lot of people are misinterpreting it, all right, because everyone is pricing in rate cuts, um, and I'm going to go over how we can still actually get potentially rate cuts, but ultimately still be in a higher for longer environment. All right. Uh, so it's going to be a really good video. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. But as always, the content provided on the channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial or investment advice. And if you're new to the channel, I started a completely free newsletter for you guys called Investment Intelligence. Uh, giving out free finance content, trading content, and I also try to sprinkle in some free trade ideas in there as well. Um, and so you can sign up for that using the link in the description below. You know, energy is something that's been catching a lot of people's attention, the move in oil. Uh, back in March, I was writing multiple newsletters about energy, right? We we're in energy trades. Um, and, you know, there was a lot to be looking for in there. And I just recently wrote about commodities. A lot of people are starting to talk about commodities uh, but we try to be ahead of some of the trends, right? And, you know, you can go back and check out some of the previous newsletters looking at the website because there is a website associated with it. Uh, and in there, you can check out all of the different, um, you know, different type of trade ideas that we've had uh, and different type of articles and content that we post out there. And if you want to join the Discord to get access to all of my analysis, all of my different trade ideas, um, you know, it, it's only 10 bucks a month, right? There's a link in the description for that. Um, you know, I'm not as active on YouTube these days. Um, you know, I, I try to be what I can, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm just a regular person like you guys. And, you know, I enjoy making these videos. I try to put them out when I have time, uh, but I'm much more active in the Discord. I post about 20 plus swing trade ideas, uh, you know, a week in there. I'm going over my analysis posting the key levels, the different trades, the different setups that I'm looking at um, and, you know, what it is that I'm actually paying attention to uh, in the market currently. Right. So links are in the description for all of that. 
Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we got into Tilray, right? We're posting uh, the setups here on Tilray, breaking down the anchored VWAP. Uh, you know, the risk to reward was about a three to one there uh, just for the first price target. Uh, and those call options did pretty well there. You can see it went from 222, uh, well above 222 into the $3. I don't even remember how high it went, but the thing absolutely exploded. Uh, VLO was an energy play, Valero. Um, you know, that you can see that play, uh, you know, the last runner on that one went up well over 300%. We were talking about it in the Discord uh, with a two to one risk to reward ratio back when it was a 144. Absolutely exploded past there coming up into the 180s, right? Now, enough about that. Let's talk about treasury yields. Okay, so even after the run up in yields, the U.S. 10 year yield is still just 1.5 standard deviations above its one year moving average, not overextended yet per this measure. And that's exactly what it means. We're not really overextended. It's very possible that the 10-year yield can continue to rise, right? And if yields are rising higher, that's going to result in bonds dropping lower, okay? And so this just gives you a little bit of a measurement to understand, um, you know, are we, are treasury yields super overextended? Are bonds super oversold? Um, that's not necessarily the case, right? And there could potentially still be more room to run. Um, as All Star Charts has pointed out here, you know, Treasury bonds, they peaked December 27th. So, you know, this entire year, they've been going down and going down and going down. And they've been in a four year downtrend, right? I mean, if you look at this, this is this is like the toughest bear market. I mean, if you're a bond market bull, you have been, you know, getting obliterated literally for the past four years, right? From 2020 to present we are still in a very clear and evident downtrend, right? And the big question is, you know, are things going to completely reverse and are we going to make new lows? Um, that's very highly debatable. Um, it's definitely not my top scenario. But when you look at a downtrend like this, remember, you know, they always say the trend is your friend. And we really haven't broken out of this major downtrend yet. We're still potentially trying to find a bottom here. And so we're going to see if the bottom in late 2023 uh, was the actual bottom and we can start forming some higher lows here. Now, Liz Young, uh, she's really good. I love a lot of her stuff. Uh, treasury bears have the upper hand at the moment. The 10-year treasury yields are moving higher and comfortably above recent technical levels. Piercing of 4.7 and an eventual test of 4.8 would not be out of the question given the recent trend. And so, yes, they do have a strong trend, and we could continue heading up there uh, towards those levels. And I think if we get to 5%, I mean, that that's going to be pretty crazy, in my opinion. Uh, but let's talk about TLT real quick, okay? I know everyone really likes trading this. This little tag right here, this is a gap down to fill, okay? I talk about gaps. I've been talking about gaps on the chart on charts for, for years now on the channel. So we're not going to spend too much time on it, but just know that about 90% of the time they do fill historically. Now, the chart is scattered with gaps up above, uh, but being that we've been in a downtrend, we're a little bit more focused on where potentially some of the gaps down could fill, right? When we were all the way up here, we weren't too worried about the gap down that we just filled today at 88. We weren't too worried about that. But once we started breaking below 93, then we, we were saying, all right, hey, this is a little bit of a possibility now that we can start heading toward. And, and we're commenting that, hey, these could be magnets for price action, right? These could be magnets for price action and eventually draw a price down to some of these gaps so that they get filled. And when we take a look, there's still one unfilled gap down here at 85.26. Now, there's some work to be done. But if you think about it, we're only about $3 away from there on the TLT, which is not too much, right? You know, um, you know, a few more percent and, and we end up filling that gap. And then below there, I mean, potentially, you know, then you're another $3 away from the previous lows that we've had in TLT, the bottom, right? So lots of things to consider, right? And those are the things that you want to consider, in my opinion, right? Now, when it came to technical levels, I still think that basically 92 is the most important level. If you want to get really precise, 92.2 is my precise level, but it's basically 92, okay? It was big support here. You can see when we were trying to break out when that big rally that we had last year, we danced around it a lot. We broke out, came back down, broke out, came back, retested it, and then we gapped up above there and really just started you know, continuing that uptrend and having a strong uptrend. And then what do you see? We come back down, we dance around it, not able to break it, right? We come back down, dance around it, not able to break it. And even this most recent time when we broke it, 
We ended up dancing around it again before ultimately we get the big flush. So 92, if you're a bull on TLT, you really need to see TLT get above 92, okay? Now, one important thing that I want to highlight here before we get into some of the signals that I use and that I point out on the channel to help give you an edge is this is our 61.8% retracement level, right, from the lows to the highs. The reason that this is important, all right, and that this level, we'll just round it up to 89.50, is going to be a very, very important level is because the more time you spend below the 61.8% retracement level, the greater the odds are of a 100% retracement, okay? So below 89.50 and the longer we spend below 89.50, that is bad for TLT bulls, okay? So you really want to set an alert to this area uh, and you want to see us trading above here, right? Okay, because again, below here, the odds increase, okay? So the odds are going up that we're going to get a 100% retracement back down to our previous lows, right? Um, that's not what people want, okay? Unless you're shorting something like bonds and you want it to come back down to retest lows. Now let's talk about some of these signals that we use, okay? We, you can use the RSI. I try to keep things pretty simple, okay? Um, you know, the KISS really works, right? K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. And, you know, there's reasons for that, right? You can dive into many, many different indicators. I use different indicators, but especially on YouTube, I really try to keep things simple. And, you know, just look at how clean this level was on the RSI. I told you guys, hey, if we break through this level, that's going to be a sign of a potential flush in TLT down in an oversold territory, right? And what do we end up doing? We dance around there, bounce around it, bounce around it, break through, retest, push down, and then we hit oversold. But let's look at where we actually got the flush. Where did that flush occur? Once we gap down from that key level of 92, right? So now we're combining a couple of things together, right? We know number one, that 92 is that really important level. And then number two, all right, we're keeping it simple that, hey, this level here on the RSI has also been a very key important level. If you notice that each time we are testing this level, right, over here once, twice, what is TLT doing, right? Well, it's making a low and then a lower low. And then we come down and test this level again, and we're making lower lows. And then we come down here and test it again, and we made a lower low, right? And then we come over here, we test it again, and what are we doing? Well, we're dancing around the same level. But if you notice, the RSI is staying flat. And over here, we make another lower low. Over here, we're making more lower lows. And, you know, the whole point of this is that we had a slight bullish divergence, right? If you if you just simply look at it, right, and we, we'll get rid of some of these drawings here, right? This is clearly a downtrend, right, throughout this period here where the RSI was just staying flat. Okay, so TLT was going down, making lower lows, but it wasn't losing relative strength. It was holding relative strength. It was holding its momentum. And, you know, we were looking to see whether or not that level was going to hold. It did not. Now, um, one of my other favorite signals is, you know, really just the MACD on the daily time frame. Okay, when you see the red line cross below this white line here, that's going to be a bearish crossover, right? Take a look at where the bearish crossover happened and then look what happened in price action afterwards, right? We got a downtrend, okay? Um, you know, it's not always going to work. It's not always going to be super smooth, right? If you take a look here, we got a bullish crossover and what did we get? Well, we got two or three more days of bullishness, right? Um, but eventually that ended up, you know, reversing on itself, okay? But you know, right here, we ended up getting that sell signal again. And what do you see? Well, we had extended selling afterwards. And most recently, we got the MACD crossover right around here. And what do you see? Extended selling afterwards. So um, it's something that I look for as confirmation. The RSI is a little bit more of a leading indicator. It's what's known as a leading indicator. And the MACD is what's known as a lagging indicator, right? So uh, what that means is that the MACD is going to tell you what's happened after it's already happened, okay? The RSI is going to tell you what could potentially happen based on the conditions of the RSI. So it's going to tell you what could happen in the future versus the MACD is going to tell you what has already happened in the past, right? When you get those bearish crossovers, you've already seen a bearish shift in price action, right? So keep that in mind when trying to use some of those indicators. Now, I like to gauge TLT, all right, which is the 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, um, but I don't necessarily trade it based off of the 20 year treasury, okay? The TNX, the 10 year treasury is the most commonly, um, you know, used metric in the bond market to measure treasury yields. 
And that's pretty much the one that I go by. Now, same thing on the RSI here. Okay, notice how we had this shelf, right? We had this shelf here and we were not able to break out. And I said, hey, if we break out of this, that's going to be a sign that TLT could start dropping, right? Just like if we broke through this shelf, it's a sign TLT could drop. If we broke through this shelf, it's a sign that TNX could rise. And not only that, we had a chart pattern here known as a cup and handle. Uh, we fired off of that cup and handle, very, very strong fire. And Liz Lang was talking about these 4.8 area levels. Um, you know, take a look what we have up here, guys, a gap. Okay, we've got a gap up here right around 4.778. Let's just round it up to an even number of 4.8. So, you know, this trend can continue. But what I do want to point out is that, you know, we could potentially check back here first, right? Not only is there a gap to fill right here, but it's also at a key level we've been paying attention to of 4.535. So I'll be interested to see, do we pull back towards that 4.535 area and then continue heading higher, right? It's very common to see that, um, you know, in the treasury yields, right? You know, you have the cup and handle set up here. We start to break out, we come back and check back, and then we get the rest of the continued move. So, you know, would it make sense for something like that to happen again? I think so, right? I think that's something that can happen. So if we come back here to TLT, remember 89.50 is that key level. We really need to stay above there. That's where bulls need price action to get above and really hold above. The more time we spend below 89.50, and even if we were to do a little bit of a false breakout to the upside, okay, and let's say we, you know, do something like this, consolidate, and then we lose that level again, well, 86.35 is going to be your next level of support, and that's basically the top of the gap, right? Here is the gap in between those two candlesticks, uh, taking price all the way back down to 85.26, and then from there, you know, you're only about three bucks away uh, from the most recent lows near 82, so... Uh, that's really the main important things that I'm looking at when it comes to TLT. Uh, but, you know, back when we're over here and we're looking at the MACD crossover and some of these other signals, you know, there's other ways to find signals, right? The market is actually always telling you something. You just have to listen, right? But if you think of it like a radio station, okay? And if you don't know what channel to listen to, well, then you're not going to hear the right message, right? If all you know is, you know, all you listen to is, you know, let's say like 90s or 2000s classics radio, okay? And you're not hearing uh, any of the new music, right? Any of the new music that's happening right now, or you're not hearing any of the music from the 60s or 70s, 80s, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, you're not going to hear that message. And so uh, the EQRR, this is what's known as, um, this is the ProShares Equities for Rising Rates ETF. And so what this is, is this is an ETF uh, that is supposed to outperform the S&P 500, um, you know, in a rising rate environment, right? That's the thesis behind it, right? It's not something that necessarily has to happen, but that was the whole thesis. And what did we see here, right? We spotted this huge base, right? We spotted this huge base. And then we spotted the top here. And so we can see that we've got an area of resistance, overhead supply that we've tested many, many times with a huge base. And we just blew completely right past it and came right up here to the bullish price target. When, when I saw this thing breaking out, that was giving me, um, you know, the market was essentially telling me that, hey, rates are about to go higher, right? And it was before this massive spike that we saw in treasury yields. It was before this big drop that we saw in the TLT, and it was before even the hot CPI print came out. And what are we seeing now, right? After the hot CPI report has come out, it's starting to check back down. It's starting to pull back down. So the rising rates ETF has actually been dropping since we've got that hot CPI report, right? And again, if we're using this as a tool, right, as a radio station, it's telling us that, hey, maybe yields could drop a little bit. And what did we just talk about? Well, yields potentially dropping a little bit, right? Maybe just dropping a little bit to continue the uptrend, okay? Uh, but we really want to see TLT bounce as well and get above that 89.50 area. So that's what I'm looking really as a potential possibility here. We are oversold on the TLT daily time frame. Um, you know, just because you're oversold doesn't mean you can't go lower. Uh, one thing that I will say is that the bond market versus the stock market after trading the bond market for the past couple of years, I've noticed that it it kind of respects technical analysis a little bit more, uh, which may seem odd to some people when it comes to, you know, treasury yields and other things like that responding to technical analysis. 
Um, but, you know, once you start to really get these oversold conditions, you know, a lot of people like to call the bond market smart money. And a lot of these people will just say, hey, you know, things are a little bit too oversold. You know, maybe we'll get a little bit of a bounce. Um, and, and, and I play a lot of those type of moves. Um, so I, I'm a little bit interested in going long TLT right now. Everyone is really bearish. We could can see, see it to continue to drop more. Um, but I'm honestly going to be looking for some short term, you know, uh, opportunities potentially to the long side. Um, you know, whether those are on a one hour chart, a four hour chart, you know, a little bit smaller time frames for some intraday trades or some one to two day trade swings. Uh, that's something I'm personally going to be keeping an eye out over the next week or two. Um, but let's talk about what this whole term of higher for longer can mean. Right here, we've got the 30-year Treasury yields, okay? And this is a monthly time frame. And what I want you guys to see is we've basically been in, you know, let's just call it a 40-year downtrend, okay? 40-year downtrend where Treasury yields have just continued to drop and drop and drop. You know, we talk about these bases being formed and bases forming. I mean, look at this. This is this is a base forming here, guys, right now at this moment. OK, yeah, we do have a little bit of a channel here, a bullish channel, right, where we've checked it here. We've checked it here. And what did we do again? Just recently check it up here and we pulled back. Is it possible we put in a lower high and a lower high and we start to gravitate back towards the lower end of this channel? Yeah, that's very possible, right? And what would cause such a dramatic drop to head back to the lower end? Well, that would be rate cuts, right? But when we think of higher for longer, you know, I think that we're looking at a shift in a, you know, you know, multi-decade long downtrend, right? And so what this means is that, hey, you know, even if we do get a pullback here, you know, we're potentially just going to start to see an uptrend forming here that could last over the next 5, 10, even 20 plus years, where we gradually see interest rates and treasury yields um, just continue to, you know, rise, right, and be in a rising environment. And we see them going higher for longer, rather than going uh, lower forever, right, it was the old trend or what it seemed like in the past. So uh, just some food for thought and things to consider is that, um, you know, you really need to think about what higher for longer means, um, you know, and, and what it means to you as well, right? Is it, is it something that you're focused on short term? Uh, uh, or is it something that you're focused on long term, right? If, if you're only focused on the short or only focused on the long term, um, then you don't have to worry as much, um, you know, but you want to figure out which one it is that you're focused on and how that could potentially affect, you know, whatever your trading strategy or investment thesis is. Um, so that's going to wrap up today's video. All right. If you enjoyed the analysis, don't forget to join the discord. It's only 10 bucks a month. You get access to all of my analysis. Okay. I post over 20 plus charts every single week in the discord. And you can see the different trade ideas from those charts uh, and let you guys know what it is that I'm looking at, what I'm targeting. Uh, it's been pretty tough to find some trades here recently. Besides TLT, I haven't been trading much. Uh, I did get in a couple shorts last week. And I got in a new short position this week. Uh, and those shorts are working well. Uh, we're going to see if that continues, you know, if we need to take some profit and, you know, get stopped out of those in profit, uh, or if this downtrend here is going to continue. I know Powell is pretty hawkish today. Uh, and, you know, everyone seems to be really bearish on bonds in the stock market. And when everybody starts to agree on something, well, then it usually gets me a little bit worried that, hey, we could potentially, you know, uh, be too aggressive or overextended in one direction when everyone is saying the same thing. Now, if you don't want to pay for the Discord, that's only 10 bucks a month. Sign up for the newsletter. Okay, It's completely free. And if you don't want those emails sent directly to your inbox, well, you can just check out the website, right? There's a website with it. You can check back on the website and check out my recent posts and recent articles that I'm writing. Um, and if you want to get the alerts on those, all you have to do is sign up for it and you can get those emailed directly to you. And if you ever want to do a uh, coaching session, right, or a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session, just head on over to my Ko-Fi page, right? You click on the commissions tab here, and in there, you can book a 30-minute or a one-hour session. We can go over day trading dynamics, swing trading strategies, uh, interactive q and you know, a lot of people, sometimes they just want to get my thoughts on a particular sector of the market and go over, you know, my thesis or my thoughts on where it could be, maybe what charts they should be paying attention to in that area. 
you know, some people really want to go over options, how you can leverage the shares that you own to get, you know, um, hedges via options and different things like that. Um, you know, many, many different things and topics that we can cover. Uh, and, and, you know, the Ko-Fi page is where you can uh, directly book all of those. Okay. So I appreciate you guys watching. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed today's video, uh, most likely you're really going to enjoy this next video here as well. So be sure to click on that one.